Have you ever been on a website and felt like it never ended? Well, on today's video, we're going to talk about this idea of an endless scroll. So we can see here, as we scroll down the page, we keep on scrolling and we see the same thing over and over again. What about the other way? Let's scroll up and we see the image and the same text and the image and the same text. So we've got the idea of an endless scroll. So this is used on more kind of arty websites. We can see it on places like this. So we can scroll down and notice we see the same images again and again and again. And we see it on even more complex websites. So something that looks like this. Now, again, we're not gonna make the kind of more complex version of this, the kind of like cube version. If you do want me to talk about this cube version, please comment cube in the comments below and i will make a, a tutorial on this but today's tutorial we're going to talk about this idea of an endless scroll so what's the first thing we need when we do endless scroll well we need some content to scroll into so i've just quickly made a quick website something that looks fairly basic something that looks like this so let's just quickly look at how this was put together uh, we've got our index.html, we've got a section which kind of contains everything, then an article which is kind of like the content itself, and I've got some just p tags and figures and you know the usual stuff in here. And then my star sheet again is fairly simple as well. So typography, a reset, and the general setup of typography, and then some colors and some widths and things like that. But fairly basic. It's only 42 lines of CSS. So again, this is a fairly simple website. But what do we need when we need basically our endless scroll. Well, we want something to scroll into. Basically, when I'm at the bottom, I kind of want to see the top of the next kind of like a loop. So what I want to see is basically the, the same content again. So what I could do is go into my index.html and then take the article tag and then copy and paste it into my section tag. So what I'll see is when I'm here, I have something that looks like this. This is kind of what I want. I want the bottom of my content to see the top of my content again. So the kind of trick is to repeat it. Now, I'm not going to do this in my HTML because that's just repeating content. So instead, what I'm going to do is basically make JavaScript do the work instead. So I'm going to make a new script in here, a new file called endless.js, let's call it. And let's hook this up to my index.html. I'm going to do this after my section tag. I'm going to do scripts and a source of endless.js. But the goal for now is what I want to do is copy and paste my article tag into my section tag. So first of all, I'm going to get my, let's call it container, and let's make it be equal to in my document, my page, I want to do query selector. What do I want to select? The section. Next, what I want to do is get the content, my article tag to copy and paste. So I want to get my original and in the container, there's a query selector. We want to select the article tag. So I've got my section and my article. What I want to do is kind of copy or clone my original content and put it in my container. So what I'm going to do is make a new constant called cloned. And this is going to be equal to my original. But then what I want to do is clone it. I want to do dot clone node. I want to run this. I'm also going to put the word true in here. Now, the reason for putting true is I want not just the tag, but all the tags inside it as well. So what I want to do next is let's have a look. Let's save that. Let's see if it works. So what I get right now is just one bit of content. Now, the reason it's only one bit of content is we've saved clone to JavaScript, but we're not doing anything with it. What we want to do is place this into my container. So on the container, what I want to do is dot append child. What do I want to append or add to the bottom of? The clone version. So I've got the original and a clone version. And if I save now and refresh, what we'll get is a second version, almost like we've copied and pasted it. So if I keep scrolling down the page right now, I'll get to the bottom of the second section. So what technically is an endless scroll? Well, it's a bit of a kind of trick really. So when I get to the middle here, what happens is this just basically jumps me all the way up to the start. So it feels like I'm doing an endless scroll, but when I get around about halfway down the page, it's actually just jumping me back to the start instantly. So it feels like I'm doing this. So 
how do we do this JavaScript? Well, what I want to do is listen out for basically what we're scrolling. And when I'm halfway down the page, then jump me back to the top. So on the window, which is the browser, we're going to do an add event listener. And we're going to run this when we load the page. What do we want to listen out for? A scroll event. What do we want to do on the scroll event? Comma, a function. Some round brackets, an arrow, and some curly brackets. So we're going to open up the curly brackets to make it easier to read. Again, this can sometimes look a little bit weird on its own, but it's just part of the same bit. We're just adding a bit of space. So the first thing we need to do is, what is half of the page? Well, technically, we've got two bits of content. We've got the original and then the cloned. So the size of half of the page is just the height of the original content. It's basically half of two, right? So let's find out the height of one thing. So we're going to do a constant of half height. This is going to be equal to the original content dot client height. Because we had two things, this is just one of them. What we want to do is listen out for the scroll event and see, are we below a certain threshold here? So if window dot scroll y is bigger than half of the height. What do we want to do? Well, we're going to do some curly brackets and say, bump us back up to the top. So window dot scroll to brackets zero comma zero. So if we're halfway down the page, we're going to go to the top. So let's see this in action. If I scroll down the page, what we'll see is when I get here, kind of halfway down, watch the scroll bar, it will bump me back to the top. And if I do it again, it will bump me back to the top. Now, if we do this quite quickly, it can sometimes flick and it feels a bit wrong. So it might be hard to tell, but it sometimes feels a bit off. And that's because the scroll Y might be not exactly like half the page. It might be a bit less. So I'm actually going to change zero to be where the scroll is minus this instead, because it could be, you know, if we go really, really quick, we still want to kind of match it up. So we're just going to replace this with window.scrolly minus half the height. So if we are a bit more than half, let's say we're like 60% down the page, this will just bump us to 10%. So from, you know, kind of keeping the math kind of correct to make it a little bit more accurate. So what we should get now is the same kind of look. And it feels a little bit more fluid as well. But there's one other problem that we have, which is if we go the other way, we scroll to the top, this will always hit the top because we're only going one way, not the other way. So let's fix that next. Now, what we want to think about is kind of the same thing here. Now, what I'm going to do is basically have the idea of a threshold. Now, the threshold is if I'm scrolling up the page, when I hit here, say around, you know, maybe about 100 pixels from the top, I want to just jump all the way down. So I want to do the opposite. Now, what I'm going to do is set this as a kind of like variable. I'm going to say constant of threshold. And this is going to be equal to 120 pixels down the page, let's say, something like that. And what we want to do is basically say if the window scroll Y is not this, but it's above the threshold, it's towards the top of the page, jump down the page. So we're going to do else if the window dot scroll Y is less than the threshold of 120. What we want to do is scroll up the page, window, scroll two, and we want to say zero comma watts. Well, we want to be whereabouts. Well, we want to be kind of down the page now, halfway down the page, halfway, half height, plus the original scroll width, uh, scroll Y, because obviously we want to kind of match them up. Kind of like the opposite of this, basically. So let's see if this works. Let's save. And what we get is if we scroll up now, when we hit 120, we are scrolling down. And what we'll get is looking good. So it's a little bit flicky. You can sometimes see it doesn't always work correctly. Now, there is a reason for that, which is we're not really kind of keeping in mind the threshold here for this as well. 
So what I'm just going to quickly do is also include this threshold as part of this because we want to just make sure that the threshold is included when we're going down and up. So I'm just going to add into this half height. We're going to add in this threshold as well. So what we'll do now is save and this will feel fluid in both directions. There we go. It's looking good in both directions now. And if I keep going up, it will do the same thing as well. Now, one thing that people generally like to do when they make this stuff is if I just start from scratch is when I load the page, I'm actually just going to have the ability to scroll up as well. So if I'm just refreshing the page right now, if I'm just at zero, zero, then I can't scroll up because technically the threshold has already been met. So what I'm just going to do is quickly add in when we start the page window dot scroll to zero comma threshold. So this will always start the page at the same position. It just happens to be, and again, this is always hard to see unless you open a new tab. It will start a little bit further down the page than you expect, because this just gives us something to scroll up into. Basically, that's kind of what we're thinking here. If we start at zero, zero, there's nothing to scroll up into. So this is just adding a little bit of extra things in here as well. So just to make it look a little bit better as well. So now that we've got it working, there's something I'm just going to quickly add, which actually just improves this as well. So sometimes it can feel a bit like it flicks and you can see it in some browsers, particularly worse than others. So there is a kind of quick fix to this that I found works pretty well. And it's actually to do with CSS. So what I'm going to do is just go back into my CSS and where I've got the article, this is the kind of like the original content. I'm just going to add two extra things in here that basically make it feels less flicky sometimes. So all I'm going to do is add in a transform dash style and say preserve 3D. Now this basically means that it just flattens it a little bit and it keeps the, the browser kind of rendering it a little, a little bit better. And the other one is the same kind of idea. So it's using something called backface dash visibility. And I want hidden on here as well. So basically what this does is it takes the kind of article and turns it into this like 3D hardware accelerated version. So it feels a little less flicky. Just by adding these two things in, it makes it feel a little bit smoother, especially when we're scrolling quite quickly. So this is just something that I kind of picked up on, thought it's pretty useful as well. And what we have is this endless scroll working really nicely. And that's it. I hope you really enjoyed this video on Endless Scroll. If you did, please give a like. It lets me know what you want me to cover in the future. If there's anything you do want me to cover particularly, please add it in the comments below as well. And there should be two more videos here for you to watch as well.